recording. Oh, that's new. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody. It is the June 7th meeting of the Conservation Commission. Uh, we are meeting via Zoom. Uh, with us tonight for commissioners, we have Matt Mazanoglu, David Williams, Jerry Patria. We have uh, Brian Drennan and myself, Chris Pratt along with our coordinator, Dennis Clark, and our secretary, Jean Nielsen. And welcome, everyone. Okay, Dennis, would you like to start us off with anything? Uh, look at the minutes, I guess. Uh, just looking at the agenda, and let's see. Yeah, let's do the minutes, get yeah. those out of the way. Anybody have any comments or concerns or corrections on the, uh, the minutes? I read through them and did not notice anything that needed correcting, but I will I will hold off making a motion unless somebody else wants to take a motion. Brian, Brian you're muted. <laughs> I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Add a boy. Yes. I'll second. Okay. Uh Matt, what do you say? Aye. Jerry? Aye. And I myself. <laughs> minutes accepted. Okay. So uh, we had a, it's on the agenda it's under new business or requests or uh, seeking permission to, to survey for American climbing ferns on Palmer Brook. Um, I think this is the second time we've gotten that request. And I believe they're talking about going on town property and that's why Oh. That they're asking, asking for that request, but let me see if I can pull up that email. Um, email. Okay, here it is. And it's pretty small to read, but let me do a screen share. Uh, on behalf of the Native Plant Trust, formerly New England Wildflower Society, we would like to request permission to conduct a brief survey in American Climbing Fern <clears throat> on North Quarry Road and South Palmer Brook near Massachusetts, Connecticut borderline. We are in the midst of the data transfer and some of our coordinates have errors. In the past, our records indicate that you have joined us in the survey since it's the town of Southwick property. However, our current coordinates indicate that the population is in the Feldman property to the west of the town property. I am hoping that since you have participated in this survey before, you might have some information regarding the actual location of the population and whether it is in fact in the town property or the neighbors or both. Thank you in advance. Um, I mean, I don't see anything wrong with them surveying on town property, but they would probably wanna get permission from the neighbors if they're gonna go on to their property. Does anybody else have yeah. Concerns? Um, Dennis, when they like say to... we've participated, do they mean that we've actually gone out and done physical surveys for them? No. I, I did. Last time I did go out there with them. Yeah. Oh, nice. We, do you recall looked... if it's on town property or the Feldman property? Um, at the time, it was neither. We couldn't find it. So oh. it was it's on neither one of the properties. But we'll. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll ask them when they want to go out there and I'll let everybody know. We can go take a look and I'll contact Mr. Feldman and find out if it's okay for us to uh, poke around his property at the same time. But we probably just give a, a formal uh, answer to the uh, request. That sounds good. You can write him a, an okie dokie, I guess. Yeah, just an email right. back would be sufficient. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we had, uh, Should we make a motion? I'll make a motion to say yes to that. Brian, Brandon, what do you say? Aye. Well, Matt, you seconded it, I heard? Yes. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> David? Yes, aye. <laughs> Jerry? Aye. Okay. A little off tonight. The heat got to me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, some, something that's not on the agenda, Chris, but it just take a couple of minutes. Okay. Is uh, Rising Corner property. They've been out there. Of course, we know we had the uh, grant that we had gotten awarded through the Appalachian Mountain Club, and they've been doing all the work out there, <clears throat> putting uh, ADA accessible walkways from right. the parking area to the floating bridge. And they asked if they could uh, remove the waddles, which I told them, of course, go ahead. They used some of the hay in the waddles to stabilize it. Did some tilling yeah. alongside of the path. And then went back out there this weekend and they planted a small pollinator garden, which is nice. We've completed the grass planting phase of work today. Next week, we'll be addressing more drainage concerns. But they come down, hi Dennis, there's quite a bit of multi-flora rows around the trail and big area for Stillbrook. Has a conservation committee ever looked at removal? I look at removal of multi-flora every day, but I'm not sure how that can be done. I, I can contact them and ask them if they have any suggestions. Right. Yeah, there'd be uh, short of ripping it out and. Uh... Yeah. I've been doing everything I can on my property to try to eliminate it, and it's uh, it's really difficult. It yeah. doesn't want to go away. Sometimes when you try to remove it, it just comes back stronger. And it spreads pretty quick. Hey Dennis, didn't one of their messages also? talk about them trying to do regrading for the parking area to make getting in and out easier. Have you seen anything on that more than just the email that came out? Well, that, that part of the project has been, was done when we went out there to look at it. Of course, it was covered with snow when we went, but uh, that part of the project has been done for a while, the actual flat area for the ADA accessible. Right oh, the I thought area. they were, what I, maybe I misinterpreted it, but I thought they were looking to make it, uh, change the gradient to get in and out of the property off of uh, Rising Corner. Oh yeah, well that's the trail that goes from the parking area to the boardwalk has uh, been switchbacks and grades and that's okay. all been done. That's pretty much stabilized. So they're going to so do, do anything right up abutting the road then just from that flat parking area back. Yeah, what they've done so far is pretty much um, the extent of the project. Okay. I guess now they're asking about the multi-floor rows, which if they wanna, if they have some ideas, they wanna help out, I'm all for that, because that's some nasty invasive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a couple Bert, more minutes. Bert, you, can you hear me? You're, you're muted. Okay, yeah. Um, you, do you have any more of that pollinator seed mix that you uh, left or? You know, no, it kind of, um, when, I, when I opened it uh, earlier in the spring, it was all, it looked like maybe it had tried to germinate um, oh. <laughs> and, then dry, and then dried up. I don't know, it was, this was just kind of like fluffy, you know, I don't know. There weren't any actual seeds in there. <laughs> yeah, it went bad. Then, huh? Okay. Yeah. Just curious. Yeah. So we got two minutes before the first hearing. Uh, mandatory conflict of interest assessment for commissioners. Did everybody get that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I guess I have a question on that. If we are on more than one board, do we have to do it for all of the boards or just? Chris, one? when you get to the certificate, the last page of it, uh -huh. you can change the title. Uh -huh. You know, Chris Pratt Conservation Commission, Chris Pratt CPC, Chris Pratt, whatever board and committee you're on, you can just reprint it with a different title. Okay, I'll have to do the whole thing over. It's too late now. <laughs> I think you can bring the certificate back up again. Okay, I'll try. Okay, let me get the uh, get the legal ad out, but uh, Jean did want to make sure that we had a roll call all the visitors that are here to comment on the uh, first hearing. 
So let me get the uh, the legal ad. Need names and addresses of everybody speaking. Right. Okay, the Southwood Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing under the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, General Law C 131 and Section 40, and the Southwood Conservation Commission regulations and bylaw chapter 182 and chapter 450 for a notice of intent. Proposed project locations 42 Depot Street, map 89, parcel 30. The applicant proposes construction of a multi unit residential community with an associated site improvements a portion of which is located within the buffer zone to wetland resource areas. The hearing be held right now. Welcome everybody. All right, and who do we have speaking here tonight? Yes, hello everyone. Uh, Ryan Nelson from R. Levesque Associates, uh, representing the applicant, um, Right Hand Clyde Real Estate. I'm gonna attempt to share my screen. Can everyone see that? Yes. Okay, uh, so the subject property estate is 42 Depot Street. Um, this property is approximately 22 acres. Uh, what you're looking at here is an existing conditions plan. It's abutted by the rail trail. Um, this would be to the uh, east and then Depot Street is here on the south. Um, so the property line is this darker dashed line shown here. It wraps around. There are wetlands located in the, or just barely off site to the west. Um, you'll see there's a wetland boundary, these WF flags starting about here uh, and then wraps around and fades away here and that um, imparts a 100 foot buffer zone onto the subject property. Those wetland boundaries were delineated uh, last year and previously determined by an RDA um, through the commission, uh, I believe sometime last year. Uh, these wetlands um, funnel into a culvert that goes under Depot Street and then off site. Um, the property contains a single family home, the original farmhouse is here. There's a couple accessory barns and garages. Um, the property climbs in elevation from the street to one of the high points located here and then descends back down. There's a large field in the back. Um, and then the property starts to climb uphill again towards, uh, the depot square development offsite. So the proposed project uh, is a residential development. There's going to be about there are eight buildings total. Um, the site's large, so there's a, a these sheets are split across different the, the plan views split across different sheets. Um, the reason why we're submitting a notice of intent is this building here is located within the hundred foot buffer zone to the BBW as well as some of the proposed site grading that will occur. Just to give you guys a general uh, overview, um, the site contains, uh, hold on here, pull up my other report. So the project um, entails demoing, obviously, the existing house, um, all the outbuildings, um, clearing within the limit of work, and then the construction of um, two road rates two roadways, the main access road, which will be Wildflower Lane, uh, located right here. And then a uh, secondary cul-de-sac turnaround um, that we're calling Primrose Way. So totaling about 3,075 linear feet of roadway. Uh, there's going to be eight buildings uh, for a total of 100 units. And the development is gonna be serviced by underground water, sanitary sewer, electric, and um, communi communication and utility services. In addition to that, um, we have to meet stormwater management guidelines. So the site's gonna be graded such that all stormwater from impervious areas within the roadway are captured via catch basins and they're going to be routed to five different, what we call design points. So these are sub catchment areas um, that manage stormwater for a different watershed of the property. So from this high point um, of the property, the area is going to be graded back towards the street. Stormwater is going to be collected in what we call dry detention basins. Um, and then the rear of the site will have three surface infiltration basins. Uh, first one is located here. And then as you head north on the property, um, there's another one located here and another one located here. Um, so the 
there is going to be quite a bit of site grading because the property does change in elevation, um, you know, rolling up and down. So the beginning of the property, if you head in from Depot Street, this existing hill here will be cut down and then that uh, material will be used towards the rear of the site to fill in the lower elevations. Um, but as far as work within jurisdiction to the wetland resource areas, um, we're focused on this area right here along the Western property boundary. So you can see here's the wetland boundary here at the bottom of the slope. Um, you have your hundred foot buffer zone as this line right here goes through the buildings. And then this darker dashed SF line is labeled silt fence. Um, these are your proposed grade contours. Um, so aside from that, I could go on and on about the entire project, but that hits the key points of what's within the buffer zone. I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have. Brian, is the uh, the gradient coming? I can't see the numbers. Is the gradient still coming downhill towards the buildings or is it going from the buildings down into that channel area? Um, so it's grading towards the street and away from the buildings. So it's no, I'm on the other side of the building, on the back side of the building, is it going back towards the channel or is that? Um, so in the hill. Yep. Uh, so in this area here, it'd be going away from the buildings down, down the hill towards the wetland. Um, then it hits the ridge here and changes direction and goes towards this detention basin. So from this point northwards, um, it goes downhill. And then from this point here, uh, back towards the street, it gets captured by this detention basin. Ryan, are, are you proposing any grading within the 50 foot buffer? Um, very, a very small area. You'll see to tie into existing grades. Uh, this is the silt fence working line. And then here is this dashed line is your 50 foot wetland buffer. So it'd be this area right here. And then this area right here. Because there is a quite a bit of a drop off right now that goes down into the wetlands would naturally prohibit anybody from using that for a backyard. Right. So this would be a cut. So this, you know, existing grade here, 273 proposed 261. Um, so there's a cut of 12 feet. So we won't be filling over the edge, you know, of this slope. It would just be lowering the top of the hill. Um, and that's necessary just because of the changing topography of the site. Um, we tried to limit it as much as we could, but um, we have to tie in, tie into those existing contours somewhere. And there are areas where we're staying, um, you know, farther than 50 feet away from the wetland. So um, it kind of balances itself out. But yes, there are a couple small areas where we are within the 50 foot buffer zone. So how will the people that actually live in the buildings know where the backyard ends, where the 50 uh, foot buffer starts? How will they know not to mow past that area? Um, I think a, probably a good solution is to set, you know, concrete markers or some sort of monumentation along that boundary. Chris, what do you think for uh, monumentation should we leave that up to the developer or uh, well i mean we've used boulders in the past um you know i don't know i think boulders are better than plants or if you use both maybe would be a good idea um you now boulders are hard to move plants are easy to rip out um concrete i don't know if, um, what that would look like but uh we could uh, leave it in the order conditions that it would have to be submitted before uh, before the project could start and approved a form of uh, a boundary, a limit of work, a limit of backyard. Oh, yeah. yeah. I hate to uh, you know put something there that's not going to work out, but we need to have you need to have something. Right. Otherwise, people will just you know they don't know where the fifty foot line is. They're just going to mow right over it, and they could. 
we've had other instances where you know people would mow right up to the wetlands if they could so oh yeah i mean they they go and they start cutting their own little paths <laughs> and make yeah. their own yard i mean it's, it's fine if they want to use it if they want to yeah. go back there but not to turn it into lawn uh, i mean not everybody's aware of the wetland uh laws so i mean there has to be something any other commissioners have any ideas on uh what would make a good uh deterrent or a good uh monument i like I the boulders i know I like in the boulders. past yeah. it hasn't been recent but we've used like birdhouses too but they can be knocked down and misconstrued as something else. Mm -hmm. I, I like the boulders So it, it, if you want, if you can't, if you, we don't make a decision tonight and you do want to close on this tonight, then you could write that into the order of conditions that would have to be submitted and approved right. by the commission. Right. I, I also like the idea of using boulders. Yeah, I, I think everybody would probably tend towards that. So you can mm. give your clients, uh, Ryan, you can let your client know what the commission would like to see. Hey, Ryan, right? Like if you look at unit six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, right? Yep. How close is that to the 50 foot? Uh give me one second. I do have some dimensions. Because it looks like there's not gonna be much mowing going on back there, anyways. No. <laughs> um, give me one second here. 140. Fifteen feet, fourteen feet at the narrowest yeah. point. Tight. And then at maybe where it kind of bellies out a little bit, twenty so, something feet. Okay, so that's going to be the back of the unit, right? Are they putting? Is there thoughts of? Are they putting decks on the back? Are they going to put concrete patios back there, which is a different issue altogether? You know what? What is going on the back of those buildings? Um, let me pull up the grading plan here. I believe they're concrete pads. Uh, even even those that are within the hundred foot buffer. Um, so on these units, no, we're not showing a concrete pad. Obviously, if things change in the future. Um, that would have to be amended or a separate NOI filed in the future. Um, mm -hmm. No, on these units, we're not showing it. Hey, Ryan, I got a, a question. Yep. Why, why can't those units be moved more towards the middle and have less, you know, the uh, open field area? Why do they have to be so far pushed against the uh, wetland area? Um. It's a good question. John T was the one that designed this. Um, I'd see there's a developed recreation area here in the center. I'm not sure if it was like a you know, development calculation for that. Um, probably it was due to a grade change um, because as you move the buildings, give me one second here, find the right sheet. It looks like the gradient stays pretty much the same on that road as it does through the middle of the uh, the field area. It would make a lot of sense if you could move those, you know, just another 50 feet or so even. And to move point. It'd be people in the, the, the units would be happier to have a little bit of a backyard and be less chance of any problems happening in the resource area. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to, I don't, unfortunately, I don't have an answer for you right now on that. Um, I'd have Ryan, to talk to my Ryan I have another down. question. I have another sure. question for you about the, uh, the drainage on the roofs of those, that center unit. Where does, is it a common gutter and where does it empty? Uh, yes. So it is a common gutter. If you can see uh, this roof leader pipe right here along the back of the building in the front. Right. So eight inch subsurface and that ultimately gets routed to these dry detention basins. When you say routed, what's the path? Uh, sure. 
So um, starts here and on this side of the building, um, mm -hmm. it looks like there's a design point from, you know, I'm not sure where the brake line and roofs would be, but some of it's going to go to this infiltration basin down here mm -hmm. via this subsurface pipe that ties yeah. into the roadway drainage. And then at some point, there's probably a break uh, right here. It is where the roof line pitches the other way in the front and the back. Uh, they tie together here, cross underneath the road, tie in with probably these same buildings and then outlets at this detention basin here. Okay, so there's really not much chance of it getting into the wetland uh, from the roof? No, they, they'd be routed away and downhill of right. the wetland. Okay. Thanks. And uh, don't forget, Jerry, that the uh, town engineers are going to be reviewing this for stormwater also. Uh, Randy and John Goddard are in the process of uh, reviewing this project okay. as we speak. Fantastic. I, I think, yeah, we, I think it'd be good to get an answer to that question. I mean, it seems like this has happened before where commissioners would say, can't you just move it over a few feet? And they've actually done it. It's just, I don't know why, you know, but maybe there's a reason not to, but I think that would definitely be worth investigating. Yep, certainly. Yep. I will uh, confer with my coworkers and I'll figure out what their rationale was, what the design constraints were. So Chris, before you take any questions from the uh, abutters, uh, Gene, needs to get, uh, as I guess as they speak, you can, they can just give their names and addresses. Oh, you're muted, Chris. That's why I can't hear you. I have a wild animal behind me. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> sorry about that. Is there anybody who would like to speak? You can unmute and uh, state your name and address if you would. All right, I guess not, but we will be back, I believe, for continuation in a couple of weeks. Okay. All right, so I assume we're looking at a continuation, Ryan. Uh, if you guys, you know, are would like that information about the 50 foot then sure um, yeah, yeah we would uh, like to know why that can't happen because it, i mean that would make a lot of sense and it would solve a lot of problems okay yep we can get back through on that so uh we'll continue to the next conservation commission meeting okay yeah ryan while you're having conversations you might as well want to pose the question about the boulders as well mm -hmm. Just let yeah them know that's our intent okay yep. We, yeah, we, uh, Chris, we, we do have John Goddard attending the meeting. I don't know if John has anything he wanted to uh, add to this. There he is. Hi, hey, John. everybody. Uh, nothing to add, but really just uh, all paying close attention so that uh, um, we can help make good decisions moving forward. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. So, Chris, if you're looking for a motion for yeah, continuation. I will make a motion to continue this to our next meeting. Do I have a second? second that. Mehmet is a second. Jerry, what do you say? I say aye. David, what do you say? Aye. And Brian, what do you say? Aye. Okay, we are continued till next meeting. Okay, thank you, everyone. All right, it's 720, we have a continuation of uh, Sodom Mountain Road, so there's no legal ad for that, and Ryan can just uh, continue. Sure, uh, so this is pick up where we last left off, uh, introduced this project a couple of weeks ago, just to give you guys a gist of what was going on now that we have received DEP comments, um, we've made some revisions. Uh, brief recap, this is a property, um, at the western end of Sodom Mountain Road, or at least the maintained portion. The road uh, dead ends here. There's a gate and this 
remaining part of the road that heads west towards Granville is abandoned and not passable. Um, but there is a limited section of frontage on the maintained portion of Sodom Mountain Road that the applicant, uh, Mr. Dan Dumais, would like to build a single family home on for himself. Um, the property slopes from west to east. Uh, there is a bordering vegetated wetland located here, this flagged boundary. Uh, there's an intermittent stream that runs alongside a mountain road here. And then there's a perennial stream, Dismal Brook, that flows southeasterly in this direction. Um, a lot of lines going on in the plan, but the 200 foot riverfront area boundary is this line shown here. That's the 100 foot, isn't it, Ryan? Uh, the. That's the 100 foot you're looking at right there. Sorry, you're correct. Yep, that's the 100 foot. The 200 foot is over here. My apologies. Is right here. Um, and then the buffer zone, 100 foot buffer zone line uh, kind of comes around here. So the majority of the almost entirety of this project site is within the buffer zone to wetlands or intermittent streams. And a port, uh, you know, maybe three quarters of the project is located within riverfront area. Um, so some key components of the project, uh, this intermittent stream along Sada Mountain Road will need to be spanned. So there's gonna be roughly 10 by 16 open bottom box culvert that will span this road, uh, sorry, the stream. Um, I have a cross section of that. Uh, here are your delineated bank flags of the stream. It's very shallow, um, so exaggerated at the scale. It, it, it doesn't look like much. The stream is only about six inches deep, um, but the proposed crossing meets the bankful width. We're at least 1.2 times the, the bankful width, and we meet the openness ratio um, for passage underneath the culvert. So... Um... After talking with Mark Stinson and looking at the DEP comments, there seems to be some uh, uh, confusion about the, uh, the wetland boundaries themselves. So I think we should go out there to, uh, you know, first of all, confirm those wetland boundaries because we never really have done that. Um, the wetland maps, the DEP maps do show different, uh, uh, different delineation. So I think the first thing we need to do is go out and, you know, make sure, confirm that delineation. And uh, some of the uh, alternative scope of analysis had me a little confused. It sounds like you're saying that none of the rest of the property is able to be developed. Correct. You're, that's Why what you're that saying. I mean? None of that. None of that property. And there's a lot of property up there that it can't be developed. Right. It, there's no. There's no access to it topography of that abandoned roadway um, and there's no other frontage. Well, so if that road were to be improved, then there would be access to it. So, I mean, in the future, there there could be buildable lots. I mean, it's, as it is right now, there may be not, but I mean, anybody can build a road. Um, that is the same side of mountain road that's going by the house that you're proposing. It's not a different road. It's the same road. It's the same, um, characterized as, as, you know, where it is down at the bottom as it is up on the top. So I don't know what difference it makes, why you could build down here and you couldn't build on the top. Would they like to donate that land if it's not buildable? It'd be great open space area. Or, or conservation restriction of some type. If, you, if they really thought it's not buildable, then I would understand why they'd want to use this lot, but I, I'm a little skeptical about that. I'd have to talk with Mr. Beck with the owner about any sort of yeah. restriction. I, I haven't talked with him about that yet. Um, I know he, he's trying. He's trying. He's tried to. Uh, he would have liked to preserve this land before. You know, he's talked about um, you know selling it to the town, but seeing it appeared like it wasn't buildable, it's very difficult to get any kind of grants for properties that appear not to be buildable. Um, so that was our you know catch 22 on this because I would have liked to seen it been preserved also but right. when it looks when it looks like this and it, most people assume which is a bad thing to do assume anything but um, the rest of the property I, I don't know I'm not that familiar with it but if he was willing to 
do some kind of conservation restriction on the rest of it, I think you'd have a better chance of, uh, you know, getting the, the commission to understand why he needs to develop this small piece at the bottom in the wetland. Yeah, Was this the one that had the setback issue too? No, there's no well, setback because it's all in the, the, air, the wetland area. I mean, the this, this actually, this actually is not uh, is not a building lot as of yet. It's not on record, and as a matter of fact, it's got to go in front of the planning board because it's zoned AC. And to be able to build in an AC zone, it has to get a special permit from the planning board. So it hasn't even been in front of the planning board to get uh, building lot status at this point. Correct, Ryan? That that's correct. Yep. There's uh, three components to this project in terms of permitting. Uh, one obviously is conservation. Uh, two is the use or yeah, to be allowed to build a single family home in the AC zone um, through the planning board. And then thirdly is a variance request from the front setback um, of Sada Mountain Road to the house or requesting a variance of that distance also. That's what I thought, because I thought the town still considered that a road and it was in within the 75 feet, right? Where they wanted to change. Yeah. Uh, yes, that's correct. So that oh, yeah, hasn't there's... been resolved yet, right? None of those other processes have been gone through yet. Not yet. We haven't had a hearing for those yet. I believe planning board is tomorrow night. So there, there are a few outstanding issues to say the least. Uh, and we should uh, take a look at the uh, resource areas while we got an opportunity. Um, seemed like a good time to do that. Yeah, I mean, this is the one we were gonna go out and take a look at and we decided not to because we weren't sure it was even gonna get back to us based on everything that was going on with this property, right? It just seemed like a waste of time. Yeah, yeah, we, were, yeah we were, everything had to change because of the original notice was done, um, not assuming there was a, presuming there was a riverfront area. So things right. had changed. There was a whole different scope of alternatives, and all that still has to be uh, reviewed thoroughly. And I, not last but not least, uh, I guess there's some issues with uh, payment. The DEP brought up some uh, issues with not getting the proper payments for the uh, right. So yeah, just to back up, um, Dismo Brook, uh, the when so. Current USGS mapping shows it as a dash intermittent stream. Uh, but if you run stream stats report, um, depending where you pick your delineation point on the property, trips the threshold of perennial versus intermittent. So we had, when we first looked at this project, picked the design point for the, for the a digitized center line for stream stats that showed intermittent. And then Mark Stinson, when he did his review of the NOI, when it was submitted, um, found that the digitized center line farther east on the property qualified as perennial. So that was the um, reason for the change to riverfront area. And subsequently, the fee uh, for an NOI needs to be multiplied by 1.5. So yes, we've submitted the additional fees to DEP. Um, they're still being processed with COVID. They're about two to three weeks lag time. So I don't know about the other commission, the rest of the commission, but I would uh, feel a lot more comfortable if we did have a wildlife habitat evaluation done. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I spoke with Mr. Stenson. He was talking uh, about uh, some things like that, maybe a mo uh, another monitor for the, or another. Uh, Ryan, you could, you could do that without, we wouldn't have to get a third party consultant. You could just do that under our request, correct? Uh, yes. So what do you think, uh, Chris, commissioners? Do you want to want to go that route? Also, I know yeah. if a, if a uh, somebody came in and said that it really wasn't that big of an impact as we as it appears to be, it would uh, might change uh, the way we look at things. Yeah, I mean, on paper things look not so great, but in the field, sometimes things look a little different. Sure. Yeah, I'd be happy to set some layout stakes and meet you guys out there. Um, I think that would be helpful for everyone. Okay. So does the commission, is the commission want a uh, wildlife habitat uh, study done on this? 
I think that would be a great idea. Yes. Help us to understand the impact a little bit more uh, in depth. Okay, so there's a... It's, it, it, can we do, may I request we do a site visit first? Absolutely. Sure. Do you want to try to set something up now or if, uh, has everybody got their calendars handy? Yeah, my wife's right next to me. <laughs> um, Wednesday or Thursday I could do. Okay, I'm good with that. Am I Michelle? Oh, she has to look at the actual calendar. It's not Friday. No Friday. Well, it'd have to be earlier Wednesday, right, David? Or Friday early, early. Early, early. Yeah, any morning, Wednesday, Wednesday Thursday, morning. even very early on Friday would be fine. And just so everyone knows, uh, New York tied it up. It's 1-1. One, one. You guys decide. I'm open. About nine o'clock on Thursday. Nine o'clock Thursday. I can do Friday. I can't do Thursday or Wednesday. But I mean, if you have Harry, enough how's people. How's your week look? Yeah. You lost me at early. <laughs> <laughs> Is nine o'clock early, Jerry? Oh, I could do nine. I could do nine. Okay. Probably, uh, let's see, dentist you, on Wednesday. I could probably do Thursday. You gamers that are up till five o'clock in the morning. Thursday. Thursday, nine o'clock, nine a.m. That Thursday. would work best. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. I do have dentist on Thursday. I'm sorry. What about Wednesday? Wednesday, I'm open. How about Wednesday? Wednesday, good. I do. I got a nine o'clock meeting on Wednesday. I can't do it. We'll put you on Zoom, I bet you can look from the, from your meeting. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> if, if the Zoom meeting that I have to be at wasn't at nine, sure. <laughs> well, do you have an Apple? Because we could FaceTime you while you're Zooming. That's right, double dipping. Double dipping. I okay, wish. So what day are we looking at now? Wednesday. Wednesday the think, night. Right? Wednesday. Friday does not work for me. Okay, Wednesday, okay. nine o'clock Wednesday. Okay. We are. Yeah. Well, I'll be I'll be done by then. Okay. Well, I'll be done by then. Yes, please tell her to start baking before our site visit. So that <laughs> she just walked in. So yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Those rolls. That was good. All right. <laughs> I'll do my best. Okay. Thank you. 9 a.m. Wednesday it is. All right. And that's uh, okay. it's out of mountain, right? It's out of mountain. Out of mountain. Right? Out of mountain. All right. It's, we'll drive up as far as we can. No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we're looking. All right, so a continuation for this in order, I guess. I'll make a motion to continue this uh, project on Santa Mountain. Do I have a second? Second. Um, is a second. Uh, Brian, what do you say? Aye. Jerry? Aye. And David? Yes. Okay, Aye. we're continued on too. All right, Ryan, while we have you, we got uh, Fred Jackson Road on the agenda. Yes. Um, so we finally heard back from DEP regarding the 401 water quality yesterday or today. No, it's today actually. Um, they just want some plan revisions, some further clarification on you know plan legibility and color coding, and no, no real layout changes. Um, so we hope to get that wrapped up end of this week and hopefully by the next meeting we'll have some answers for you. Excellent. So we need a continuation, Chris, yes. for that. Yep, I'll make a motion on that as well. To continue uh, until our next meeting. Ms. Mamet. Second. Again, yes, very good. David? Yes, I. Jerry? Yes, I. And Brian? I. Okay. Continue. Two one Islanders. Uh -oh. 
<laughs> I don't want to hear those scores. All right. So that's it for the uh, for the hearings. Now, Chris, we we were trying to propose an LPP joint work session for June fourteenth, but we've got a uh, request from Dick Grinnells to postpone that. Correct, I saw and that, I, and I have not gotten a confirmation from the uh, from the state DEP that they could make it. So, right. So we'll postpone it until so indefinitely. That's going to be. Yep. Next, under new business, you have uh, Bert Cultural Commission. Yep, I see Bert's here. Hey, Bert. Hi, hello. Uh, Zoom won't let me change it from my wife's name, but you know. That's okay. <laughs> These things happen. Um, I just had a couple of, well, I wanted to say hello uh, to everyone. Um, and just a uh, couple of quick questions, um, uh, mostly about the Sofanowski property and, um, I'm just wondering, I'm assuming you guys are the source of the trail maps. Um, there, are, there are no trail maps over there and haven't been for a while. And there's a newer, newish uh, red trail that I don't think was on the maps before. Yeah. So I'm wondering um, how we go about getting some more trail maps. Um, is there well, I can, I can print out more maps, but if there's a new trail on there, we should, uh, Put the new trail on it before I print them out. Yeah. Um, can you sketch it on the one of the old maps? Like if I send you a digital file, can you sketch it on there, Bert? And I can uh, oh. I can add it. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, I'm not a Boy Scout. I'm not sure if I can <laughs> how accurate that will be, but uh, you know, I can uh, give it a try. Just to show where it leaves one trail and meets up with another would be, you yeah. know. <laughs> pretty good and they're a roundabout length yeah uh, they're, they're blazed and color-coded correct the boy scouts did that for us yes right yep yep but we, um, we left off one of the colors is that uh well i think i think the red well my experience anyway i don't i don't think the red trail was one of the initial ones i think it's been in the past year maybe two um that that's that's I've seen some markers on trees, you know, with red trail. Well, maybe the best thing to do would be print out a couple of the old maps and get a scouting party out there and yeah. actually take the trails and find out uh, what's correct and what needs to be added. Yeah. Yeah. And Dennis, I did also note that the last time I was up there that we we do need to get a, a service, a uh, you know, lawn maintenance service or whatever for the area that's usually mown around the parking lot. Yeah, Shays is no longer doing it. We're not sure who, there was a mystery person that uh, yeah. didn't mow it for us. I was told by a, Mr. Dana Gway said he thought it was Ray Fox, but I didn't think Ray was able, able to get on a tractor at this time. I'm very surprised because I know he hasn't been doing too well. Hopefully it was him. Hopefully he's able to get on the tractor, but we do need to find somebody, and that is on the Agricultural Commission uh, agenda for Wednesday night. Okay. Uh, it, but if you know anybody that could, uh, you know, we got the what we were paying Shays and how many times a year, um, if we could find somebody to do that same routine, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. And whoever did mow it, it is more of a sort of a tractor mow than a lawnmower mow, yeah. you know, because yeah. all the cuttings are just there, you know. Um, right. Yeah. We need somebody that actually can uh, yeah. cut it like like it's grass instead of mowing it, because they had a tractor with a rig behind it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Just kind of um, related to the trail maps on that signboard at the Sofanowski, you know, one side of it faces north and one side of it faces south, and everything on the south side is all bleached out <laughs> by this. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, you know, there's a list of birds and wildlife that have been seen there. I don't know if you guys are- Could reprint you know, some of those and get them up. Reprint those and uh, kind of re refresh that. Um, yeah. And then uh, bigger picture, I kind of wonder about uh, trail trail maintenance. I mean, I live right next door to the Sofanowski, so I'm, I'm over there a lot. And But this may apply to other properties as well in terms of trail maintenance. Um, is there a, 
this might be a silly question, but do you guys have budget for that kind of thing? I mean, the trails are, I mean, it's such a beautiful property. Somebody, you know, we were talking about Dismal Swamp, Dismal Brook earlier, and there's that Dismal Brook right, um, beautiful. area in Granby. I mean, it's just beautiful the way they've done that. Um, and Sofanowski is beautiful too, but all the trails are, you know, rocks and roots and you got to be watching your feet all the time, <laughs> you know, to walk in there. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, it looks like the uh, finance committee cut another thousand dollars out of the commission's yeah. uh, budget as far as maintenance goes. Hmm. Yeah, well, that's so. too bad. Um, and there's one stretch. Um, it's uh, if you're looking into the Sofanowski, uh, it's right behind Dana Gway's house. There's a, a fairly long straight trail that goes straight piece of the trail right behind the Gway's house. And it's, you know, it's must have been you know, tractors or trucks or whatever at one point, because it's it's below grade kind of, and it's always wet. <laughs> I mean, you can go there in August and it's, you need, you need boots, <laughs> you know. I just wonder if, you know, if, if the town would bring over some of their, you know, wood chips you know, to fill in there. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, that area is a mess. It was just a bad place to put a trail in the first place. Yeah. You're right, it's soaked yeah. all the time. <laughs> We've been talking about that for years about moving that trail over to get it out of that low area because that yeah that's just, no matter what you put in there it's just going to stay wet it's a it's a bad place like Dave says a bad place for yeah. a trail so it'd be yeah. we've talked about it for years moving that over next right next to it possibly potentially yeah. if we could uh, you know apply for some grant money I guess that would be at this point the only thing we could do. Uh, the, other, okay. the other thing I did notice up there, which is problematic, I would think, is the amount of poison ivy around the picnic tables up at the top of the, the hill mm -hmm. by the mor memorial. Um, it's like a poison ivy patch. It's uh, Oh, really? I didn't notice that. Yeah, you will. It's an itchy, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would have to find a landscaper willing to uh, work with poison ivy because the last one we had I uh, wouldn't work with poison ivy because they were allergic to it. So right. we should uh, find out when we get to whoever mows the property, find out if we can get somebody yeah. to uh, remove the poison ivy. Yeah. In maybe, maybe, get some, maybe get some goats up there to eat it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bring some more deer in or something. I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, so just, uh, you know, as I said, I'm, I'm over in the Sofanowski all the time and um, just thought, well, gee, well, let me, you know, bring up a couple of these questions with with you guys. So, uh, I mean, there's, it'd be great if we had, if all of our commissions had all the money we really would like to, you know, to do this stuff, but we don't. So, uh, anyway, just wanted to bring it up. All right. I wonder if, if you know, maybe maybe a fundraiser, some sort of a raffle thing, anything that could make the money that seems to be necessary for these projects on the side might be a better approach than trying to get it out of the town, especially yeah. if we don't have the money for it. Right. Or they don't to give one or the other, you know? Yeah. Open for any ideas we can, we can get to uh, get some funding to get the trails and get the ground. We're doing it on a shoestring budget. Right. Like, come on, ask her. <laughs> I was wondering what that was. <laughs> yeah, along along those lines, you know, we have the same thing in the Agriculture Commission with the community garden. You know, it's a kind of a catch twenty two because we mostly, you know, donate the materials and donate the labor, and then it gets to be budget time in the town, and they say, "Well, gee, you guys don't spend any money. You must not need any money." Right. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you got to combine it. You got to spend the money they're giving and make some money on the side to spend, you know, so. Um, but it's, it's a constant battle, so. I can see how much we have left in the Conservation Commission <laughs> budget. And if you can find somebody to do it, I to can. Move the trail? I yeah. can actually send Bert you uh, an email tomorrow with some of the money that we can use from conservation that we are not going to expend this year. Hmm. Oh, but you have to find the person yeah. that can do it. I'll tell you how much we can uh, spare out of like the consultant budget, which we haven't used yet. 
Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Right here. Yes. Thank yeah. Thank well, you. Thank you that's, that's great. Thank you. Thank you for coming to the meeting. We appreciate your input. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, leading into the, the trail grant, uh, that was the next thing on the agenda, Chris, was the uh, $15,000 that was awarded from the CPC funds. Uh, the status of that, we're still trying to get that secured. Uh, the best ideal way to do it would be to get the money transferred from CPC account into a conservation special account just for, the, uh, for that project. Because we do have a contractor it has a business that was willing to donate his labor if we can come up with the material to fix those eroded and degraded areas. But we're gonna to need to have that, those monies available. And so far we haven't had uh, success getting it out of the CPC. Um, I did some, had some more conversation with Carl over the email this morning explaining to him that this is not contingent upon the trails grant from the state because we don't even know if we're gonna get that we don't know how much we're going to get. We don't know when we're going to get it. And the whole idea of the CPC was to give us this money so we could get going on it. And if we do get money from the trails grant from the state, we can always reimburse the CPC for any extra money that we have left over. Right. I mean, that's uh, that was the, the, the motion that was made at the CPC meeting was to, to put the money through. Um, regardless of the grant status. Um, so I'm not sure what the holdup is or, or how people can hold back the money that's been voted on by the town. Well, that's my question, right? I was there, we voted that it was allowable to use the money for that. So where does, where does the town administrator get off keeping the money held back? I mean, the, uh, the town has spoken. Hopefully he, hopefully he won't, Dave, because we need to have that money. It's for a great cause. It was voted on. Everything was done according to, uh, according to the rules. So hopefully uh, this was a slight hold up and uh, he can get things straightened out uh, shortly so we can get moving on this project. We've already, uh, anybody that knows last week uh, saw the great cleanup that they took all the old docks out of the water, done with all volunteers. Uh, Dan Hest uh, provided a dumpster to put all the old, to put the debris in. And we had a great bunch of volunteers uh, pulling the stuff out with chainsaws and sawzalls. And uh, we need to keep the momentum going. So hopefully there won't be any holds up and we, hold ups and we can uh, get that money secured into a conservation account and uh, move forward with the project. <clears throat> Uh, seeing Chris is the chair of both the Conservation Commission and the Community Preservation Committee, you wouldn't think we'd have these problems. But when people think that when it's voted on at a town meeting that it's a done deal, they're sorely mistaken. I found that out the hard way. I think I'll be uh, writing a letter to the state to see what the legalities are and what recourse there is to, to relieve that money. Uh, to where it was voted on going. So, I mean, not really sure what recourse there is, but, or- well, It'd be uh, nice to have that answer in your back pocket anyways, whether or not right. the town releases the funds, it's just good to know for future reference. Right. And the, uh, the last thing under new business is that when we went to use the boat, which we'd never do once in a rare occasion, it is, you know, partially conservation's boat, um, has a piece of it, didn't realize it needs a new motor. So we ended up having to use one of Kurt Saunders uh, vessels and it was touch and go because there were so many nails and rusty objects that, you know, we were afraid we were gonna tear the seats of the boat. Luckily, everybody was careful. Nobody got hurt, nothing got torn, but we really need to have that boat available. I mean, that's a, an asset to the lake. The, the lake management committee uses that. They take the bowie, put the bowies in, take the bowies out. That, that's not a frivolous item. Um, I don't know what we have to do. Right. I mean, that was have... taken out of Lake Management's budget. I believe they had that in their budget and the select board took it out of their budget for the motor. I'm sure we'll be discussing that Thursday night. What's that, Norm? I'm sure we'll be discussing that Thursday night. Right. 
Well, keep us posted. Let us know if there's anything we can do because we need to get, that's an absolute necessity to have that boat on the water running, functioning it properly at all times. So I agree. I hopefully you put that as a priority and uh, the fishing, uh, bass fishing tournaments don't uh, overwhelm the entire meeting. Right. Luckily, conservation really doesn't have a lot to do with the bass fishing. So uh, we're going to leave that to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you got anything else, Norm, while we got you on the, the hot seat here? There were, there were a couple of items. Um, I was asked uh, at the last Conservation Commission meeting to look at changing the evaluation for lake treatment for the fall rather than the spring. And apparently the regulations and the best practices dictate so when that evaluation takes place and it has to be done in the springtime. Uh, so how do we go about changing that so we can uh, have it done where it makes more sense? Well, uh, I don't know how we change the regulation. This, I, I'm looking at, I mean, don't, the treatment needs to be in the spring, but as far as the evaluation of where it needs to be treated, that, I mean, I don't know how they even can assess that. When they drive by, there are no weeds. You know, you know our, our solitude is the experts in the field and they, they pretty much determine when we do it based upon the regulations. No, I understand when they do it, but it, as far as the assessment, wouldn't it make sense to, to go around midsummer, late summer, early fall and see where the actual weeds are so they can come back in the spring and treat those areas? I will... Uh, Discuss it further at the uh, lake manager. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's common sense. I know I've got a ton of curly leaf pond weed around my dock every year and it never yeah. gets treated. So that's why I'm a little more curious than most people, I would assume. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> then uh, there was some discussion on uh, how do we help identify uh, docks that are not permitted on the lake. And they didn't have any really big ideas, but I've got some ideas that perhaps I can work with Gene and come up with a solution to identifying those docks. So let me let me get in touch with Gene in the next couple of weeks and see what we can do. Great. All yeah, right. That, that would be that would work. Sounds like some boat trips this summer too would maybe help out Gene, with that. Yeah. Gene needs some more. Gene needs more stuff to do. So. <laughs> well, maybe I can help her. <laughs> Thank you. That's it. So Norm, I can I send you a, a list of okay. all the people that I have. Okay. That be that course. haven't paid. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then you can tell me what you want done with it. Okay. Very good. So, Dave, do you have any update on the on the Swamp Trail Boardwalk? Are, are we getting ready to to uh, ask for some money from the CPC for that yet? Well, I thought we did ask for money for the CPC. I put together that budget, but you guys told me we were past the time and it would have to wait until the next opportunity to request funds for. Did, did you put something together for us? I, I I'm not. Uh... Yeah, I sent you guys a budget. I mean, I'm sure I could resend it but i yeah i put together a budget okay well i'll help you write out the application then i didn't realize we we had that gone that far with it yet yeah yeah, yeah. you know it was a budget for all the supplies that we thought we would need but yeah. uh, i yeah. mean you know that was six months ago uh, brian what has everything gone up from a lumber standpoint 15 yeah. 20 percent in the last six months mm -hmm. times yeah. three yeah so i mean that budget's probably low now i think we came in at like Fifteen thousand dollars, but I would say that's probably got to be closer to twenty thousand dollars. We well, can let get me, together and do that, Dennis. I'll bring it when we see each other on um, Wednesday. Okay. Yeah, I, and I will. Uh, do me a favor. Can you bring a blank one of those trail maps for Safanovsky too? I yep. just want. I, I may go up and take a walk and see if I can figure out that red trail myself. Will do. Will do. All right. Um, Gene, do you have any update on uh, town hall protocol? What the latest? Uh... 
I believe I sent everybody an email. You do have access to town hall. So in any board and committee and you're just free to walk around. The However, they recommend if you have not been vaccinated to continue wearing a mask. It's like you're aware of. Just during the day, right? At night, there's, you can't go into town hall at night, correct? No, they're still working on whether you can continue with Zoom or whether you can be allowed to conduct a meeting and have members of the public at the meeting. So the difference well, would be yeah. you can have a Zoom meeting with the committee members in the, the land use room with a Zoom open to the public and right. put on that big TV up there. Yeah. But right now they haven't figured out if you can have both yet. You know, we don't have the capability of that at this time either. We don't not capable of doing that. So hopefully uh, keep us posted if you hear anything. Yeah, well, I'll let you know when I feel like coming back inside the building versus <laughs> staying here, okay? <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we're at the end of our agenda. Does anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to end this meeting. Oh, good. I'll second. Good. Thank you, Jerry. I met first. Jerry second. I will say yay. Dave, what do you say? Yay. Brian, what do you say? Yes. All right. Five say goodbye.